There's Pete. All right. Well, welcome everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good at, good evening. It is uh, Wednesday, December twenty third, twenty twenty. It is currently six o two p.m. Uh, we are conducting a public hearing <coughs> for the City of Jamestown's five year consolidated action plan and annual action plan. Uh, I'm Mayor Edward A. Sunquist. I'm the mayor and chief executive officer of the city of Jamestown, and we'll be conducting today's uh, public hearing. Uh, before we begin, I will ask uh, Clerk Williams to please read uh, the legal notice for the public hearing. Sure. Legal notice. Notice is hereby given that the city of Jamestown will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. Due to COVID-19 related restrictions, the city's focus on citizen safety and in efforts to minimize a large gathering, the public hearing will be held virtually on Zoom. Access to the public hearing is as follows. The link was provided to join online and there was also the meeting ID and number to join by phone listed in the legal notice. The purpose of this public hearing is to assist the Department of Development in gaining a better understanding of the housing, neighborhood and economic development needs that might be addressed through the city's community development block grant, CDBG, and home program allocations for 2020 and its FY 2020 to fiscal year 2024 <laughs> consolidated plan. To all interested agencies, groups, and persons, the City of Jamestown's proposed fiscal year 2020 community development block grant, CDBG, and home annual action plan is summarized as follows. Summary of PY 2020 CDBG activities, proposed low to moderate benefit activities, 80% of active funds. Activity, lead poisoning prevention, $55,000. Strategic code enforcement, $57,517. Small business development and technical assistance, $49,085. Environmental assessment and remediation, $55,000. Housing counseling and education, $10,000. Community engagement, enhanced community safety, $30,000. <clears> Target Area Infrastructure Improvement Program, $150,000. ADA Improvements Public Facilities, $144,935. Rehabilitation, Publicly or Privately Owned Commercial slash Industrial, $150,000. Subtotal for Low to Moderate Benefit Activities, $701,537. Proposed Slums and Blight Activities, 20% of Active Funds. Strategic Anti-Blight Initiative, $75,000. Neighborhood target area demolition, $100,000. Subtotal slum and blight activities, $175,000. CDBG administration, $321,512. Total CDBG program, $1,198,049. Summary of PY 2020 home program activities. Activity, home owner occupied rehabilitation, $256,850. Choto set aside, 15%, $51,370. The subtotal, $308,220. Home administration, $34,247. Total home program, $342,467. Those who are unable to attend this hearing are invited to submit their comments in writing to the Department of Development, Third Floor Municipal Building, 200 East 3rd Street, Jamestown, New York, 14701, no later than December 23rd by 4 p.m. The Jamestown City Council and subsequent submission of the city's fiscal year 2020 CDBG and home annual action plan and fiscal year 2020 to 2024 five-year strategic plan application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development will consider all comments received prior to the formal authorization of the application. Note this, the 30-day public comment period began November 20th, 2020 and closes December 20th, 2020. However, the city will accept comments up until December 23rd, 2020, no later than 4 p.m. Copies of the proposed 2020 to 2024 consolidated plan and the fiscal year 2020 annual action plan will continue to be available for review at the municipal building, 200 East 3rd Street, Jamestown, New York, Department of Development, Mayor's Office, and James Prendergast Library, 509 Cherry Street, Jamestown, New York, and at www.jamestowny.net slash department slash Department of Development slash CDBG and home. 
Thank you, Clerk Williams. I appreciate that very long legal notice and required. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, to the members of our uh, public, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, before we get to the public comment period, um, we will have a presentation uh, by our Department of Development uh, for the public on the Consolidated Action Plan and Annual Action Plan. I would like to recognize members of staff of the Department of Development that are here this evening. We have Crystal Serdic, who is our Director of Development. We have Stephanie Wright, who is our Economic Coordinator. And we have Alan Shadel, who is a planner for the city of Jamestown. Uh, at this time and prior to a public comment period, we will turn it over to uh, Director Serdic uh, to go through the presentation by the Department of Development uh, for the Consolidated Action Plan and Annual Action Plan. Ms. Serdic. Thank you. I am just looking to share my screen. Got one more participant joining us. There we go. Okay. I think our other participant is, is in, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking time out of this evening and a busy holiday season to join us. Um, we appreciate you being here and we will um, try to make it brief as far as the presentation goes and allow you time to share your comments. Um, so we're here for the, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll start off with um, quickly the, the consolidated action plan and the annual action plan. Um, the consolidated plan is a, a five-year plan, so it will um, it extends from 2020 to 2024, so the full uh, length of time during during that period. Um, we, as uh, Clerk Williams mentioned in the legal notice, um, the consolidated plan this this evening was meant to be the um, final public hearing for the consolidated and annual plans. Um, late on Friday uh, afternoon, we did discover that there was a supplementary document, a citizen participation plan document that needed to be revised and updated. Um, so in consulting with HUD, we determined that the best course of action was to extend our submission date of these plans to accommodate an additional 30 day public comment period uh, so that uh, the community has the opportunity to review that citizen participation plan, which is now uh, available on the city's website. Um, and like the consolidated plan and annual plans will be available um, at request in the mayor's office, my office, um, and anyone who, who would like a copy of that can reach out to us and, and we can get that to you. Um, so with that said, there will be an additional 30 days that we will receive public comments. Um, so tonight will not be a final public hearing prior to the submission. We will have another public hearing in January. Um, our intention is to be able to submit this plan uh, Jan by January 31st. Um, so hopefully we can, can get that um, submitted uh, at the end of January. Um, so uh, briefly, process overview. Um, it's a lengthy process to, to get from uh, point A to point B and get through the consolidated and annual action planning process. Um, I won't go through every single item, but uh, you know, we start with gathering information, getting our, our um, public comment, consulting with uh, local stakeholders, um, consulting with uh, other agencies in the community and, and organizations, um, gathering all of the, the public input, 
uh, consulting with HUD. We work very closely with HUD to make sure that we are um, meeting all of their regulations and guidelines, uh, drafting the five-year plan and the annual plan, and then we put that out for public review. Um, once we do get, get those final public comments, we will seek municipal approval, and then we submit our application to HUD. So our, our process timeline um, really started with, uh, with some internal department meetings, which is, is actually not listed here, um, back in February of this year. Uh, we had some stakeholder meetings. We've had um, two public workshops. We had a public hearing back in September. Um, the public comment period started in November and um, we found that there were a lot of public comments that we really wanted to address and take some additional time to make sure that we um, addressed in a thoughtful way. So we did uh, actually seek an extension and uh, that, that initial extension extended our submission date to the end of December, uh, which we now know will end up being the end of January. So our next public hearing will be January 25th of 2021. That will also end the public comment period. We will receive comments up until uh, noon on that day. Um, notices will go out as a reminder. And then our final submission to HUD will be by January 31st. Just as a reminder, um, we are required to meet HUD's national objectives for every program and activity that we propose. Those uh, objectives are as follows benefit to low and moderate income persons, aid in the prevention or elimination of slums or blight, meet a need having a particular urgency referred to as urgent need. And the two programs that we participate in in the city of Jamestown are the Community Development Block Grant and the Home Investment Partnership Program. Uh, Clerk Williams read through all of these activities um, that are proposed under the uh, proposed low to moderate benefit activities, which is 80% um, of our active funds that are proposed. Um, lead poisoning prevention in the amount of 55,000. Strategic code enforcement, 57,517. Small business development and technical assistance, $49,085. Environmental assessment and remediation, $55,000. Housing, counseling, and education for $10,000. Community engagement and enhanced community safety, $30,000. Neighborhood target area infrastructure improvement program, $150,000. ADA improvements for public facilities, $144,935. Rehabilitation for publicly or privately owned commercial or industrial properties for a subtotal of $701,000, uh, pardon me, $701,537. Uh, for proposed uh, activities on, that will uh, address slum and blight, which will be at 20% of the funds, strategic anti-blight initiatives for $75,000, neighborhood target area demolition for $100,000, for a subtotal of 175,000. CDBG administrative uh, funds will be $321,512. That is as um, allocated by HUD for a total CDBG amount of $1,198,049. Our home funds um, that have been allocated uh, for the homeowner occupied rehabilitation program $256,850. And for our CHODO set aside, 15% is $51,370 for a subtotal of $308,220. Again, the home administration, which is uh, allocated and predetermined by HUD, will be $34,247 for a total home allocation of $342,467. And with that, I'll leave you with uh, the uh, email address if you'd like to reach out and, and submit comments in writing um, to dod at jamestownny.gov. 
You can also stop into our office uh, at City Hall anytime or give us a call. Um, our contact info information is all on the city website and this information will be there as well. With that, I will hand it back to you, Mayor Sundquist. Thank you, Ms. Serdic. Uh, at this time, uh, I will uh, ask that your um, presentation uh, be uh, entered as an exhibit, uh, Clerk Williams, as well as the proposed action plan, uh, one being exhibit A and the other one being exhibit B. Um, we'll also ask at this time, uh, Clerk Williams, was there any public comment that was received uh, in writing to be read into the record uh, this evening? I did not receive anything in my office. Um, Ms. Serdic, did you receive any public comment in writing to be read into the record this evening? We did not. Okay. Um, with that being said, uh, we will open this up to the public comment period for those that have joined us this evening. Um, for those that are uh, wishing to comment, um, each individual uh, may speak for uh, up to five minutes. Uh, we ask that every individual state their name and their home address. Uh, comments should be relative uh, to the uh, um, to the presentation and the consolidated action plan and should not be personal uh, in nature. If an individual would like to speak, we would ask that you uh, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom so that we can call on you um, for this period. If you are on the phone uh, through Zoom tonight, uh, you can uh, dial star nine to raise your hand to then be recognized. Uh, so we'll give it a minute and see, is there any individual that like to raise their hand uh, to speak uh, at this time on the proposed consolidated action plan? All right, I I'm do trying see. To, I'm trying to raise my hand there, but uh, you can't see it, can you? I, I can see it. There was one right before you, uh, Doug. So. I will allow uh, uh, Pete uh, to go first, uh, Pete Maraglia, and then we'll go for Doug. Um, so Doug, I'm just going to mute you uh, momentarily while Pete goes, and then we'll go to you. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, uh, Pete, if you could please, uh, again, state your name and your home address uh, prior to your comments. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. This is Pete Maraglia. I live at 29 Gwendolyn Avenue in Jamestown. <clears throat> I just had a few comments uh, for things um, so, you, so your administration can kind of keep in mind um, the neighborhood programs, for instance. I would suggest that uh, some of the residential neighborhoods closer to downtown be targeted in the future. Um, I think uh, I know when I was with the GRC, uh, neighborhood programs tended to be more into the more residential, traditional residential, suburban type neighborhoods. And I think uh, it would be beneficial for the entire community if we started focusing in some of those inner neighborhoods. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, another thing I'd like uh, everyone to keep in mind that uh, downtown now is not really competing with the Chautauqua Mall anymore. It, but it is competing with the smaller downtowns like Lakewood, Bemis Point, and Falconer. And I feel everything should be done to, to help our retailers and, and restaurants downtown compete and, and keep in mind that, uh, you know, the big box retailers and stuff, I mean, they'll always be around, but that focus is going away. And I think uh, this is an opportunity for smaller businesses to make a foothold and, and develop a business that might be uh, sustainable for their livelihood. And I think downtown, with as many empty storefronts that there are, uh, this is an opportunity to take advantage of that because you can see where retailing is going. It's uh, online, uh, the malls are fading away. And I think, uh, individuals, entrepreneurs in the local area can have an opportunity now to get a foothold. And I think downtown would be the greatest 
incubator site they could find. Um, <laughs> I won't get into parking. I know you uh, will, uh, plan to address that uh, next year, but I feel it's still an issue. And uh, I think it's very important that we get the business and property owner input from downtown. I think that needs to be collected and, and help to analyze um, um, how better, how we can make the downtown parking system uh, and better. And I also wanted to keep in mind uh, that, uh, you know, downtown is still a struggle. I, I own a building downtown. I lease it out. I don't run a business out of there. Uh, but you, you have to keep in mind that the, the rents that are collected, generally from my surveying and talking to uh, property owners, you know, they only get three, four, five dollars a square foot. You know, nobody's making a fortune. I mean, unless you, you know, happen to get, you know, a federal government office or something. But even even in that case, I know the, uh, the DWB Center, and it does have some federal agencies in there, uh, they're still having trouble, you know, getting that filled up. And, you know, downtown's done very well since the Comedy Center. Of course, we had the pandemic, throw a monkey wrench into everything. Uh, so just keep in mind, it's still a struggle and the businesses need support, the property owners need support and expectations have to be realistic. Uh, we've got a lot of empty space. Um, if you improve your properties and stuff, that's great, but your rate of return you know, on your investment is, is going to be minimal. And I think everybody has to look at it realistically. We've had a number of uh, out-of-town owners buy buildings and then not do anything with them when they realize that, you know, the lunch traffic really isn't there. The offices, I mean, we really don't have a big demand for office space. And it's, that's going to go even farther down because of the pandemic and people finding out, well, they can do the same thing from home. So these are just things to keep in mind as we as we progress. And just one last thing I'll mention is I still feel the city owns a lot of property. And I noticed the city of Schenectady on their website actually has a place there where you can, uh, people can go and look to see what property is available. And I think I think that's an important thing for Jamestown is uh, that it should be reviewed, see how much property the city owns, and see what you can get off. Uh, out of the city's hands and, and back on the tax rolls. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Maraglia. I appreciate that. Um, we have a opportunity for another public comment. Uh, we have uh, Doug. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask you to unmute. As a reminder, please state your name and your home address. My name is Doug Champ. I live the two two five Bowling Street, Jamestown, New York. Um, can you hear me okay? Or are we all set here? Yes, we can. Hello. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, we're okay then. Yes, I don't sir. see any feedback here. I I have a I have a lot of issues here um, regarding the presentation, not in terms of. Uh, the information, but in terms of the actual uh, development of it, and, the, and the consequently the identifying of the projects that will be involved, um, the way the community development process works is that it requires a lot of insight and input and vision, I guess, over a period of time. And um, as I read through the 495 pages, it, it's somewhere between reading Jeffrey Sachs and Nathaniel Blazier with a little touch of Charles Dickens. So um, with that in mind, the activities need to have consequential metrics applied to them. In other words, uh, without looking at the, uh, I think the sheet that is not being shown is the actual goals and objectives of each activity. So that the matrix that's involved with it should show, and it does show on the application on other parts of the presentation in the programs, specific goals that are going to be pertaining to each activity. Uh, that needs to be fairly well thought out. And when I look at some of the goal objectives, it, it, 
it brings to question as to whether or not how attainable they are and why they're attainable. For instance, uh, I don't have that particular one in front of me, the exact dollar amount, but in your cited program under housing, it looks at the rehab or construction eligibility criteria. And the amount allocated for is something like $37,000 per household. Well, that figure is a difficult one to understand in terms of where it came up with that, that amount, which means that only seven units will be affected for that dollar amount. So for that amount of money, you could buy houses in Jamestown and actually have them for ownership rather than rehabilitating them. How many of those with this market in Jamestown, there's a number of them that are below $30,000 for sale now. Are they totally inhabitable? Probably not. Eating cold? Probably not. But with a concentrated effort in the part of the city, those houses could be turned into home ownership. And that's what I think we're missing within this program. In addition to that, every particular activity should have an assigned program management cost, a PAC, which is required or should be required in terms of following the actual spend down of the funds. In other words, the black rock money and the administration costs is lumped together in the one large sum. Each activity has a program administration cost or a administration development cost that should be measured out so that people get a feel for actually how much money is going in to administration for each specific activity. In addition to that, all the activities in terms of a matrix as it slides over the program should be identified with other funding sources that are potentially available to be used as leverage from the block grant program. So in other words, the block grant program should be not only a usable product in terms of community development, but it also should leverage other additional funds that are available to it. And in many cases that becomes the local share for going after additional funds. So whether we go after EDA, EDA, Economic Development Administration, ARC, or Rural Development Corporation under the United States uh, federal government, there are funding sources that require that local match. So I wish the city wouldn't lose track of that application and how those things work. So we can leverage these funds accordingly. Um, in addition to that, the lead-based paint removal and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to do one program or one particular unit with $75,000, or is that multiple units? That's not clear to me. He put down the unit number goal as one. Well, <clears throat> lead-based paint also has got to be hitched directly to code enforcement, not just lead-based paint removal. So whether a house measures up the lead-based paint, and as you know, most of the lead-based paint that is developed is inside the units. So there's some outside, but most of that over time deteriorates due through a period of, I would say, climate conditions and also the redundant uh, non-usability of that surface paint to stand up over a period of time. So <clears throat> if we're going inside buildings to remove lead-based paint, um, who's going to do it? And what's the economy of doing that? Also, I think the economic development side of the program is a bit weak in Turkey looking at job creation. And job creation is extremely important. We'll be that as well as we move forward into the future after COVID pandemic involvement. So I'd like to see what's going to be done to some extent in addressing the job creation potentials that we need to have in this community. Are we looking at training people? Are we looking at uh, finding new job opportunities coming off after COVID? I think that's extremely important as well. So each of these activities holistically have to work together to develop that community development vision. Whether it's downtown or the neighborhoods or public safety or the removal of slum and blight. There are very many houses around here now that are burned off as shelves. And I think those ought to be concentrated on being removed this next year. 
I don't know what the situation is with the gateway project and the relationship the city had uh, with those folks. So whether that's on hold, there's been very little review of that recently, where one of the conditions assigned to that was the removal of some, some slums and bike conditions and get involved with removing housing units and therefore adding these uh, other units in. So the housing assistance plan is a multi-purpose plan. And I think that needs to be looked at in terms of what your goals are. Is it in form of rehab, looking to form a home ownership or developing a scenario that will build upon that in a consolidated funding application? The one-year plan Mr. is Chapter, a plan. Yes, I'm sorry. Mind wrapping it up? Thank you. I, I'm gonna wrap it up right now. I appreciate all the work that the staff has done on this, but I always these questions and I'll challenge them um, to re-examine this uh, in terms of what, what the purpose behind the development process is and how it's going to affect our community over not just this year, but the next four years. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Champ. I appreciate that. Uh, I, we do have another participant, uh, Melissa. If you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and unmuting yourself. Uh, as a reminder, please state your name and your address uh, for the record. Uh, I'm I'm Melissa Patterniti, uh, 346 Falconer Street, Jamestown. Um, I guess one of the question one of the questions I have is how many people do we have that benefit from the HUD system in Jamestown? Because I'm pretty sure that that's a very high number. You know, um, we have a lot of low-income people that live in the city, and I think that, you know, focusing on, you know, uh, I'm not uh, doing the personal thing, but what Pete had said, I am the whole other opposite of that. I think that development of downtown has been pushed for so many years and pushed for so many years, and we don't have a downtown population that can accommodate a downtown there's a lot of low-income people that can't afford to go to almost any one of those stores downtown and buy something once a week. You know, we have to focus on that kind of stuff. And I think that when we can focus on that, you know, and, and try to bring the money to the outside of the city instead of focusing on downtown. Um, <clears throat> That's pretty much why, you know, there's so many numbers and so much stuff and it's hard to understand all of it. But um, I think that Crystal and, and everybody has done a great job. Um, myself and Doug were in a lot of the community conversations and it kind of stinks that there's not a lot of other people that want to come in and, and put their chin. <laughs> so um, hopefully maybe this next 30 days we can get some of that and, and get those ideas ramping up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paterniti. We appreciate it. Uh, at this time, I will ask if there's any other members of the public that would like to speak. Okay. Um, I will then ask uh, Ms. Sertic or if any members of your team would like to provide any further comment or um, rebuttal. Um, and then I will again ask uh, one more time, are there any other members of the public that would like to speak? Any other members of the public? Uh, hearing none, uh, Clerk Williams, we will receive the presentation and the action plan as two exhibits um, going forward with this public hearing. Uh, today's hearing will be transcribed and made available uh, to the public and the members of the City Council prior to any vote on the consolidated action plan. Feedback provided today will also help the Department of Development to uh, continue to craft their consolidated action plan and annual action plan. Um, hearing no other members of the public that wish to speak, we will declare this public hearing uh, closed. I uh, thank everyone for joining us uh, this evening uh, and I wish you all a, a happy holidays and a happy new year. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Same. Bye. Same to you. Merry Bye. Christmas, everyone.